Anyway, I'm now rambling. These are tired rambles, nothing makes sense, and editing me is gonna have a field day cutting this down into some semblance of normalcy, but... Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we're at the start of another weekly reading vlog and this week I've already started two books while, well, from last night and this morning on my lunch break at work. So let's just get straight into them. They're two different books, which is gonna be good. Let's talk about the one that I started last night. So last night I started The Will of the Many by James Islington. This is the Discord book club pick for the month, which I will have linked below for you. We do a book club every single month. So you get to vote and the book that wins is the book that we end up reading for the month when we have a channel for it and you can all take part and stuff. It's good fun. I always enjoy it and look forward to it. April's book club pick has already been chosen. So if you want to see what that is, you can join. I'll have it linked below as I said. But yeah, so this is the one for March. It is a chunky book. And honestly, the writing is absolutely tiny. So this book is like just over 600 pages long, but with the tiny typography, I'm gonna say that this should be like 650 pages long. Like honestly, it, it's a big chunky book, but I did start it last night because I finished the book I was reading for last week's vlog and I still wanted to read a little bit more. So after having like a little chill time, I wanted to start something else. So I went with this. I really like the maps. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm not too far into it. I'm up to chapter four, page 33. So really not far into it. But this is interesting. So we're following a character called Viz. I don't think it's their actual name, but that's who we're following. And Viz works in this government facility called I don't know what the facility called. It's like a prison basically and people get hooked up to these sappers and they sap your will but not just your will everything about you all your energy all your bodily energy is just gone. It's a horrible horrible thing to have done and so we see Viz and he's working not just here but also on his nights he then travels out into the city and ends up doing these underground fights. And that's what we're seeing. Viz seems to be a rather interesting character. We know there's a lot more going on with him. He's a lot smarter. There's things that have happened with his family, but you really don't know much at this point. Like I say, I'm only 30 odd pages into this. I'm enjoying it. I think the setting is really intriguing. We kind of get the setup already that Viz is this kind of special chosen one almost character, which is quite classical fantasy. The government is, is very corrupt which is about normal to be fair um but the way it works is you have this hierarchy and the hierarchy it's actually in the front of the book it's quite handy so you have Catanon rankings the rank so the first one is princeps and they receive will from 40,320 people and then this goes down to the very last one which is Octavus where they get will from no one they are just the ones conceding their will to others it's rather interesting I like that I'm ready I'm looking forward to learning more about how this works with the will what it does we definitely know from the first part with the fights that having will from others means that you are stronger and if you are seeding your will, it makes you slower, it makes you sloppy, it makes you... So your reactions aren't as fast, you're not as strong. And so somebody that might be a lot younger and a lot thinner can actually do better if they haven't given up their will, although you're meant to and it's mandatory, than somebody who is much stronger and older than them because of the fact they've given up half of their will. So it's quite interesting. I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more about it. So that is the physical book that we're going to be reading. And hopefully... I get through it this week. That, that's what I'm hoping. We'll see how much I actually managed to get read, but I've also got two more chunky books on my TBR, so we'll see. I need to get a good bit of this read, but I'm looking forward to it, and I'm kind of in the mood for a fantasy, and it's got classical fantasy elements, and I kind of, as much as this is probably not going to be a cosy book, I find classical fantasy elements, and by classical fantasy, I mean fantasy elements that I've grown up with that were predominant in the fantasy books that I read when I was younger, I find that really comforting to read. So even while the contents is probably darker, I also find it quite comforting. Don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, moving on, the other book we're reading is of course an ebook. I love having a physical book and an ebook on the go, like reading from my Kindle. Honestly, I was thinking about this and I think I actually 
prefer it in a way. So I love physical books because it's a physical book, like it's great. And I love being able to annotate in them if I want. But there is something just about being able to read from a Kindle that is so easy. And I think especially when I'm on early shifts and I'm tired, I just want to relax to it. And I just, I don't know, I prefer it. Not all the time. But at the moment, because I'm tired, I'm preferring it. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, I am reading Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. This is a cosy murder mystery. I am up to chapter 11, page 77. This is really easy and readable. We are following our main character, whose name is Ernie. He has a longer name, but he shortens it to Ernie. And he is telling us this story, looking back on the events. I really like the setup of this book, it's really quite humorous. We have him saying how classic mysteries are meant to have these certain elements and at the very start of the book you have elements that should be included in your murder mystery and certain ways to do things, like it's like a rule book, which is hilarious. And then we have Ernie saying how I am the detective but also the slightly bumbling helpful partner to the detective in one and I'm going to be honest with you and tell you these things and it's quite fun and ent entertaining he's talking about his family and explaining how everyone in his family has murdered someone and we're just slowly going through so like the book has broken down into different members of his family we start off with his brother and then it changes as we go further into the book it's really fun really easy to read and it does have that kind of cozy quality and at the very start of the book it actually tells you when the murders are going to happen and in what chapters which is hilarious and we have already had a couple of murders some are past well some are further in the past than what we're currently reading because we're explaining the backstory into how everyone in his family has murdered someone but the current like setting of the book is that all his family members are meeting up on this isolated mountain resort thing and there's now been a murder and uh, the local police is like kind of in over their head but then at the same time as you're learning about this you also find out about fam different individual family members backstory done a terrible job of explaining that like that sounds so much more complicated than what it is it is so easy to read I just maybe I'll work on how to explain that but honestly it's, it's really easy don't don't be put off it's fun I like the writing style it's an easy quick read I know I, I kind of feel like I've bumbled all of that but honestly it's good so that is what I'm reading two very different books but I thought it would be good to have something nice and light and easy to read on my lunch breaks at work because I'm on my early shifts and then pair that with the chunky fantasy book because I really want to read it so that's where we're starting this vlog right now I need to go do my journaling I'm still journaling last week I started journaling writing thoughts down every day and I'm trying to do a 30 day journaling challenge and so far it's going really well I was a little bit concerned when I moved on to my early shift to how I would find that because on my late shifts it's easy start off the day with a bit of journaling because I constantly just scroll on my phone first thing in the mornings or when I get back from work I tend to just collapse on my bed and scroll on my phone after work after an early shift so I wanted to kick the habit and get into journaling instead and so far it's been going really well I'm really pleased with it and today I was even motivated enough to not collapse on my bed straight away to up to wrap up last week's vlog to start this vlog before I even get to journaling I think it's good progress but we are only in like the first week so that was just an update for anyone curious about that but I'm going to start my evening with a bit of journaling and go from there.
just got back from work and I am feeling honestly rather tired. I'm on day five out of seven of the early shifts and it's always at this point where I start feeling a little bit drained, which meant I didn't read as much as I wanted to last night of The Will of the Many. So I broke this book down so that if I read 86 pages a day, I will get this finished by the end of the week, which normally I don't care about anymore anymore. I used to be a lot more concerned about the amount of books that I finish in a week or making sure that I finish, like if it's a bigger book, make sure I finish it within the week to talk to you about. However, I still have four books left on my TBR for March and two of them are rather large. So I need to make sure because I thing is I really want to read them all so I could easily go oh I won't get to them and it's no big deal and it isn't a big deal but I really want to read them I'm really looking forward to them so I want to try and read one big book a week and this week obviously it's the will of the many so I, I did work out if I read 86 pages a day then I would get this one finished which isn't too bad except last night I was really tired and went to bed early and I only read 50 pages last night. The day before that I did hit my target. So I'm now up to chapter 17, page 153. So we are making good progress with it, but it does mean that either today I need to catch up and read 122 pages or I'll have to catch up later in the week, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing because I've got a day off come Friday. I'm off Friday, Saturday, so I should be able to catch up then. But Anyway, that's my obsessive controlling brain in action. Let's actually talk about the book. <laughs> so this book is, I think it's going to focus more on this school. So we have, where, where did we leave it? We left it meeting Viz and seeing how he works in this prison. And there's also this fighting that he does on the side to make money. He was also living at an orphanage. He has now been taken from the orphanage and has been adopted into this quite wealthy family that's quite influential, but on the idea that he is going to be a spy on these other influential people's children because they all go to this school it's like an academy that they go to and he has to kind of brush up on all of his knowledge education so that he can fit in with this school and we're seeing that process that tutoring going on but it's not just understanding the politics of what's going on and the different things that he'll be learning within the academy but also it's to do with physical fitness because it seems like this academy is quite cutthroat. I think the majority of this book is actually going to be taking place within the academy and I like that. I'm enjoying this book so it has a lot of themes that I have read in other books. We have, it kind of reminds me almost like the Traitor Barrel Comeron where we follow Viz who is someone from this conquered land and it's been taken over by the hierarchy and they've implemented their way of doing things and eradicated anything else and you see him get really angry about this and now he's working on the inside. Now it does differ, the Traitor Barrel Comrade, the bits that I've read of that book which I really am looking forward to reading soon. I only read half of the book initially. Anyway we're not getting on that point but that focuses more on Barrow being older whereas we're actually looking at Viz at the age of 17 and going into this academy which you spent a small amount of time with in the Traitor whereas in here I feel like that's what it's focusing on. So I like it because it's exploring conquering taken over what it does to people but within the academy setting so I'm, I'm interested in it I like it there is something that's holding me back from loving this book and I can't tell whether it's just because I'm tired after work when it comes to reading this and with this being such a well it's a high fantasy book for me to be tired when I'm reading it it requires more concentration whether it's just there's something about the writing style that I haven't fully connected with I can't make up my mind because theoretically everything there like all the parts of this are good and I like it and it's got all the things that I normally like within my fantasy books. There's just something that I feel almost like there's a step between me and having the emotional attachment to this book. I feel like I'm kind of withdrawn or being held at a distance and I again I don't know if that's just me being tired or if that's something else in the book. I'm not sure but I am enjoying this. I think it's really interesting and I'm looking forward to reading more but I was falling asleep when I was reading this yesterday like literally my eyes were starting to close as I was reading and I was like yeah okay it's time to go to bed especially because I mean I know I've spoken about it but look how tiny the text is. I I have to admit this is why you know my little thing about kindle it's easier 
because the Kindle text, like you can have it set to what is comfortable for you and it just makes it so much better when you're tired and you can just have something that your eyes can relax to rather than having something that is so teeny tiny. I have also been wanting to annotate this book because there's been moments of quotes that I really like because we're looking at grief over losing one's home, one's family and what that does to a person but also the commentary on colonization and, and things like this. So I feel like there is a lot to annotate in this but I've just been too tired. Like I haven't annotated much this year but again because I'm conscious of the time that I want to get this book finished this week I haven't been annotating because it's going to take me longer to do and with me being tired I'm not reading as fast as I normally would anyway so I feel like if I was annotating when I wasn't tired I would get this finished at the end of the week and it wouldn't be so much of a problem but because I'm tired adding annotating into the mix would mean that I would barely get this read. Does that make sense? I feel like basically I've chosen the wrong time to read this book on my work shifts however I've only got a couple more days left. At the same time the two books I've got left on my March TBR that are the chunkier ones neither of those would have been good for this either so you know they, they were all going to need that a little bit more of focus but yeah I am enjoying this one I don't want anyone to be put off by the fact like I, I am enjoying it like I said everything is good I think I'm just a bit too tired normally on my after my early shifts I have a lighter book to read and this requires a bit more concentration for me anyway I've been chatting for like eight and a half minutes just about that I don't know how much of that ramble is going to be cut out from editing me but um there we are the ebook that I've been reading is exactly what I need on an early shift and at work today I managed to get a good chunk read so I am now an extra 100 pages into the book which means I am up to chapter 33 page 279 I have just under 100 pages left of the ebook to go and I'm enjoying this this is really funny really simple I don't need to focus too much on what's going on though I feel like that's going to come back to bite me in the butt I do have a theory of who's behind this and what's going on so as I said to you we get the kind of like two timelines almost because Ernest our narrator is constantly breaking the barrier between reader and narrator and is constantly talking to us and even has half chapters like where he'll be like okay so you've read chapter 14 now we're gonna have chapter 14.5 where they do a recap and tell you oh but you should have been paying attention to these things and like that he does lots of foreshadowing lots of things where he's telling you oh this is gonna happen but it really works it makes for a really interactive book and I can imagine reading this physically I would have been like writing things all over the place and having connecting things and it would have been absolutely funny great it, it would have been a really entertaining time. So I like it for that. I like it for how involved it makes you as the reader. I'm also enjoying the where the mystery is going and how it's been layered and structured because as the mystery is progressing obviously we're learning about his different family members, their background and how they've ended up killing people. So it's it's been really interesting and then seeing how that relates back to the mystery at hand which is of this person that died at this resort that's in the mountains where it's snowing. Like they're not snowed in and they make that clear that they can leave if they want to although the weather's getting pretty bad but there are points in the book where they could have left if they wanted to but they haven't. Then there's been further things that have happened and everything's escalating and I'm excited to see how it all wraps up. Like I'm expecting some kind of really big fun twist at the end but I don't know and I think if it's going to end up being the person that I think it is I won't mind like I won't think it's less of a book for that it's kind of weird because I think if it's the person that I think it is I will be happy that I'm right and intrigued to see how they do it and then it will make me want to reread the book I don't know I I'm curious I, I don't I think either way I'm gonna enjoy it I just I don't I don't know how I want it to go either but yeah it's good it's fun it's interesting there's like there's moments where things are more fast-paced and like like the action is at ramping up but at the same time you also feel quite calm about it all because you know you're the narrator is narrating this after the events so you know, you know that it can't be too bad at least for our narrator right so it's it's good I like it it's got some good components. I think it's a really fun book and I can understand why a lot of people have loved this. That's all the reading updates for today. Honestly, I'm just, I'm really tired. I just want to have a shower, do some food. I need to edit a video and then I'm going to try and read a bit more of The Will of the Many. I don't think I'm going to get my page count up to, but you know what? Even if I just read another 50 pages, I'll be happy with that and we can catch up over the weekend 
which I'm actually kind of looking forward to. I don't know why, but I've been really feeling that when I'm at home, I haven't been wanting to read loads when I've been working. I am instead wanting to save it for a day off where I can then sit down and just binge read it. I think because it's in a physical book, whereas a Kindle or on my phone, I'm happier to pick up and put it down and, and that's fine. It doesn't bother me. But I don't know, lately with a physical book, I've really just been wanting to sit there and just read constantly for like hours on end rather than little bits here and there. Anyway, I'm now rambling. These are tired rambles, nothing makes sense, and editing me is going to have a field day cutting this down into some semblance of normalcy. For now, let's go eat and have a shower. have noticed in the b-roll from last night that I did not pick up The Will of the Many. I mean I did but only a tiny little bit. You may also notice that my hair is a little bit of a chaotic mess but that is because we have just come back from work and I cannot be bothered to straighten my hair for what is hopefully going to be a less than, I'm gonna say 10 minute but probably less than 15 minute update. So you know we're just rocking the mess and that's fine. But I did pick up Poison by Ben Hubbard. So this is the non-fiction book that I wanted to read back in, was it February? Yes, February. So I spoke about it in the February reset video and I have been really bad at reading this book. Not because I don't like it, but because of the way it's written. So it's written with looking over time and how poison has been used over time and how it's evolved. And then it details more notorious cases of poisoning, but it does it in really bite-sized chunks. So this is a really good introductory book if you're interested in learning about poisons. And because of the way it's done, it's gives you enough information to intrigue you that if you wanted to, you could then search up other books about this particular thing. So a better example would be last night I read 20 pages and that was looking at the medieval and renaissance poisons and I started off with executing Elizabeth I because I was already in the middle of this subcategory and it gives you a three page snippet of Elizabeth I and how there were multiple attempts on her life and how poisoning played a part of that and then it gives you a couple pages on a poison that was notorious during that time so those events that were happening which this one was opium and it gives you a little illustration and some facts about it, its symptoms, its treatments, etc. And then also a little bit of famous poisonings. So one for opium is Charles Dickens was a famous opium user who was using the drug heavily until the time of his death in 1870. So it gives you like little tidbits like that. And then, then it moves on and it moves on to something completely different. So I then started chapter three, which is 17th and 18th century poisons. And it gives you a little overview view of that time period. For this time period it was linked to poisons being a link to witchcraft and so we start learning about that. There were some interesting ones, we had a small page on the Salem witch trials and how that was probably to do with poisoning which was really good actually because I'm wanting to read more non-fiction books about the history of women, how they were treated and also the witch trials. So this was really nice to have that in here and it's just been good, like I like reading this book. The problem is because it's done in those bite-sized things, I find it not hard to read where I'm reading like lots of pages in one go. So like sitting down and reading 60 pages in one go, it's not hard to read, but I find it harder to remember the information. So I find reading a smaller chunk at a time, I remember more, but I've decided I wanna finish this book this month. Like I really wanna do that. I really want to read hopefully six, six non-fiction books this year. That is the goal that I'm now setting myself. I really want to do that. And as much as yes, non-fiction is slower for me to read, I know I have an avid interest in poisons, 
witchcraft and how women were treated in the past, the laws that we had to do with women in the past. And so I really want to focus in on that. And I talk about that a bit more in a book haul video. I think it's coming out after this video. No, it's before, just before this, the book haul video just before this video. But yeah, so I decided last night, you know what? This is what I wanna read. I was feeling a bit tired. I ended up editing for way longer than I planned to anyway. I was editing the book haul video and decided, you know what? Yeah, I, I really wanna get to this. So I'm gonna read more of this today. I think the plan is is to read some of this while I do myself some food or just like little things, things where I can pick up, read three to six pages, put it down and then go back to it. And I'm going to finish this by the end of the month. That is my plan. It's not a long book. I've got 102 pages left to go and the text is so easy to read. So it's gonna be an easy manage, especially because there's illustrations throughout it all. And I genuinely find this so interesting. So yeah. Again, if you have any more recommendations on any of the topics for non-fiction books that I've just mentioned, whether it's poisons, witchcraft, or the history of women, let me know in the comments below, um, as in the history on how women have been treated. But I did, I did then think to myself, you know what? I need to read at least a little bit of The Will of the Many as much as I now have a plan for this book, which I'm going to get into. So I did read, I think it was 20 pages of this as well because I'm now up to page 165, chapter 19. So yeah, so I, I didn't read much, but I read a little bit. Uh, so I have no thoughts on those last 20 pages. I have decided with this book though, that because like I said to you, I'm really feeling like when it comes to bigger books like this, I just wanna sit down and be able to read it for like two to three hours at a time that's what I'm gonna do. So I am off work from Friday, and as much as I am busy Friday, Friday evening I should be free, so I plan on mainly reading this across Friday and Saturday. I really just wanna sit down with this and see if I can get stuck into it, because I feel like, I was saying it yesterday, how I feel a little bit detached from this book. Part of that, yes, is tiredness, I believe, but also part of it is because I haven't had the time just to sit here and read it for like two plus hours. And that's what I really wanna do with this book. So that's what I'm hoping to do. And then hopefully it will pique my interest with this. In other reading news though, cause I've been reading quite a bit today, uh, I finished Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone and this was so good. Oh my God, I feel so dumb, but it was fantastic. It wasn't the person that I thought it was gonna be. I loved the twists and turns of this book. Even, even in the final few pages, there was a twist and I was like, what? How did I not see this? And the thing is, it's told, he tells you. The narrator tells you so many times about Agatha Christie and all these sort of mysteries that were done during this time. And now that I look back on it, I'm like, oh, it was so obvious. It was all there. Now I'm telling myself that this is because I read it as a Kindle book and not as a physical book. Because if I was doing it as a physical book, I would have done my usual, had my notebook with me, made notes on who I think the killer is, or at the very least annotated in the book of different things and like been able to tab it and been able to follow things. And I would have put things together more easily. That's what I'm telling myself. But honestly, I loved it. The ending really solidified this. I was, I was enjoying it. I found it entertaining. I liked the writing style, but I wasn't a hundred percent like, oh, this is a new favorite. This was more of a I liked this, I will get the next book, but I'm not in a rush to get it. Now I'm like, oh no, I really liked this. This was such a good ending. I wanna get a physical copy of this and I do wanna get the next book as well because there is a new book out. Something about being on a train. Need to get that, that was great. I had such a good time with this book. It was absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed the ending. So yeah, that was great. I'm not gonna lie, that was that was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. I don't know what ebook I'm gonna read next. I have got a few saved. I am kind of in a murder mystery mood, so I might pick up another one. I've got three more on my Kindle saved and downloaded. I bought them, but you know. But I'm also tempted just to take this one into work to read on my lunch break because I feel like it would be an easy one to do. I haven't decided. So that's it. That, those are all the reading updates. We had a murder mystery book which I loved and definitely surprised me. Like I, I can't believe I didn't guess it but you know what? It was really good and I like the fact that I've had a murder mystery that surprised me. Like don't get me wrong, Agatha Christie books I can never seem to solve but other murder mysteries I've read so many of that I'm like oh yeah I kind of expect this and I tend to be right. The, like, the last couple that I've read that have been co 
Chloe's in Murder Mysteries, I have got right. So it was really fun to have one that completely took me by surprise and I was so happy with it. And then yeah, like I say, I'm getting back into this non-fiction book. I really wanna make good progress with this. I am going to stop nattering on. I'm not gonna edit today, I've decided. I have edited for the last seven days every single day. So I'm giving myself this evening off. Technically, I'm giving myself two days three days off, three days off, because I'm not gonna edit tomorrow because I'm at my partner's and I won't be editing, as in at my partner's after work, and I won't be editing Friday because I'm busy that day. So yeah, three days off and hopefully we're gonna get a good chunk of this read. I plan on reading some of this this evening as well. I probably won't read for long because I am tired and I find this book, I'm not gonna lie, it kind of puts me to sleep. Like even with that 20 pages that I was reading, I was starting to fall asleep. Not because I'm not interested, but just because I think the text is so small that I find it really tiring. And when you're already tired, that's just a recipe for disaster. Hopefully I can read like 50 pages. That would be good. If I could read 50 pages of this tonight, I'd be happy with that and then go from there. But yeah, right, okay. I'm now literally rambling and just repeating myself. I honestly, a slight tangent here. I genuinely am thankful for all of you that actually watch these, listen to me ramble, put up with me repeating myself so many times. Like I do try and edit out the repetitions when it's come to a fact of like, okay, we've said the same thing like six times now. We need to cut some of that out. But genuinely, I really do appreciate it. And I love how a lot of you do say like, we don't care about the rambles. We like the rambles. And it's, it's really nice. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. But now, now I'm actually gonna go and, and chill and read and... what I'm not connecting with in the will of the many. So to put it simply, if I was a person that did star ratings, I expected this to be a five star book because it has all the trappings that I normally like in my fantasy books and my favourite, some, not all of them, but some of my favourite fantasy books have this sort of premise. So that's what I was expecting, except for me it's closer to a four star which means it's not a bad book by any means, but this whole time I've been like, there is something missing and I'm not connecting to, and now I know what that is. So let's start off with the positives. First of all, the magic system. I like the will and the hierarchy and everything they've got. I think it's actually really easy to understand, especially because it mirrors 
our society. If you think about it, so you have the Octavus who are working class people who give up half of their will to others, those that are higher up than them. That means that they are constantly worn out and just trying to get through day to day. That is pretty much our working class society. We are constantly working, which are constantly trying to make ends meet. The amount of bills and stuff we've got to pay, like we can't, you know, it's difficult. People sometimes have to do overtime just to make the ends meet. Like it's not easy. And then as you go higher up the chain in the society in here, obviously they have people ceding will to them, which means they have extra strength and extra abilities and they're able to do more. Again, same thing in like a company. If you think of like a CEO, how much they earn, how much they're able to do with their lives as a result of this. Like it shows that structure, that pyramid structure is, is easy to grasp because that's what at least Western society is pretty much based on. So it's an easy concept for me to grasp, like that's the connection I've made. And because I've made that connection, I also see all the societal comments that this book makes. Like it really does rip apart society, the way it's built, the way things are structured, how it doesn't work. And even the people in here that are trying to get rid of this hierarchy, Viz makes the point of going, but all you're going to do is get rid of it, you've got no plan on how things are going to change, and you're just going to end up replacing those people, which doesn't mean this is going to be any better because it's all based on greed. And it's the exact same thing with our society. Our society is based on greed, and you know, if CEOs and like, governments and stuff decided to change the way they did things, the working class people could have a much better time because there is enough money to go around. Like, I'm not gonna go into massive, like, social economical debate here, but there's enough to go around if they so chose, but they do not choose to do this. So it's the same thing in here because it all comes back down to greed. So I like that. And that sort of topic that gets discussed in books, I generally on the whole really enjoy. Number two, the actual world building, the politics of the world, again, I also like. A lot of that links into what I just said about the hierarchy, society, the things that we can extrapolate from our society, but also colonization, the way it is that a country or religion or set of beliefs decides that their way is the only right way, and so they try to enforce that on others, reflected in our society. So these are comments and things that I do like in books. A lot of books that I like that have it, like I talk about the trait of our comment, I already made that connection earlier in this weekly vlog. The first half I read of that book, it reminds me of the politics in this. However, where the differences start going is that this you have in an academy setting. And I don't mind that, but it makes everything feel really low state, which I suppose starts going into the con. So we'll finish off the positive. The other positive that I like is I'm starting to connect to Viz a little bit more. I like seeing the interactions he has with fellow students, the way he has this internal debate that how can a relationship be founded if it's founded on lies? Because he is constantly lying to them because he can't tell them who he really is. A lot of the comments that they're like, oh, well, you've come from nothing and stuff he's like ah uh, yeah actually I've come from the same privilege that you've all had just different and you know it comments on these sort of things well I like that so those those three things are like the three key things I really like about this book and what should have made it five stars especially because there are really good quotes in this book that as I've already said I would annotate because I think some of the quotes are excellent now we get into the negatives and the negatives of this book where I start to touch upon is no stakes it doesn't feel high stakes at all. There are things that happen. There are points where, you know, the pacing is building, you can see things are gonna be happening and stuff, and it does get interesting. I like kind of darker aspect to this academy and the things that are going on in the background that we're slowly unveiling. However, however, there are no stakes because Viz has to be amazing at everything. And while I can honestly be like, you know what, yeah, sure, he is smart, he's worked really hard, he's trained before coming into this academy, so it makes sense that he's smart. I don't like the way he puts other people down and calls them stupid because, you know, that's just horrible. So I don't actually like Viz as a character, like the way he is, but he doesn't need to be excellent at everything. And something that made me go, you know what, that, that doesn't work for me is out of context, Viz has to swim to this island and it takes a couple of hours. That is what we're told. And Viz is a person that used to swim a lot, but hasn't swum in at least four years. And he's doing this on no food. I'm sorry, but the normal person swimming at night when the water is freaking cold with no food and they're swimming for two hours, that doesn't make sense. 
and the fact that he's got to do it there and back again and after swimming for this extreme amount of time he's then got like scale things and stuff and I'm just like really you have to be that good that you have to like it's not even that much of a struggle for you like I don't get it and we get told a lot oh my god this is gonna be so close I mean it could just make it you don't see it that you don't really feel that you don't believe that because he's just so excellent at everything you know he's gonna get through it so I'm just like Ugh. I can understand being really good at a lot of things but some things just beggars disbelief like it just doesn't work so that is a bit frustrating and it takes away from those stakes because I'm just like well of course he's going to get for it because you know he suddenly can be an Olympic swimmer and do everything and eat no food and it'd be absolutely fine so there's a lot of conveniences in this book so when things do get more difficult and the tension is starting to grow there is always something so convenient that happens so that's a bit frustrating and also the pacing of this book is a little bit off for me there are moments where this book is really really slow and then there'll be moments where you've got those high paced tension moments and you're like oh this is really interesting interesting and then you'll go straight back to slow and I'm like Ugh. it just doesn't seem to work for me in terms of the pacing but as I said I still like this book it would still be a four star book it's just I find that those parts are the reason why I'm not loving this the way I expected to but I do still think it's a good book. I have had a couple of people in the Discord say it reminds them of like Red Rising. I've not read that, so I can't comment on it. But yeah, I think it is interesting. It is good. It's got a lot of things that I really like. I would be intrigued to carry on, especially because I know the ending's meant to be really like shocking. I haven't even said where I'm up to actually. I'm up to page 409. So I don't have long left. I've actually only got 210 pages left to go. I would like to try and finish that today. So we'll see how we get on. Um, because there are parts that's really interesting, but then and there are parts where I'm just like oh, I would honestly just skim over this if I could because it just doesn't interest me and I want to get further in so I just feel like there's just just a couple of things that don't quite connect to this. I have read more of Poison. I'm now up to page 134. Um, we're in the 20th century poisons now and uh, I mean again I'm enjoying this it's good I like the fact that I'm picking this up every day now and I'm reading 10 to 20 pages a day which is really good and I'm liking it and it's really bite-sized everything I've already said about it so I'm making good progress with that I don't think I'm going to finish it this week I'm probably going to finish it next week and I'm really okay with that and I do think it's interesting and I like the different things that I've learned like the fact that in England Bradford there was an incident with a bunch of sweets so this was before like food regulations were brought in about food and what could be added into it so there was lots of substitutes made especially during the Victorian era an assistant to the sweet maker had mixed the wrong substitute in and it was actually a poison and 200 people got really really ill from these humbugs which then started regulations around food and what can go into it which I found really interesting so I like those little tidbits like that it's really it's just fun and yeah I like it I like learning stuff so that's really good and then I have started an ebook which I'm only up to chapter Two. hang on a minute no I'm up to chapter three page 15 of A Perilous Undertaking by Denna Rayburn and this is the second book in the Veronica Speedwell series and I started this while I was traveling yesterday didn't get far into it because I met my partner on the train I love this I'm so excited to be back I love Veronica I love Stoker in the first book we meet Veronica who is a butterfly person I still can't say that word um, but she is a butterfly scientist she goes around to different countries and doing things but it's very out of turn for this society like she is meant to be someone that focuses on having kids and getting married and she is like uh no thanks I do not want any part of that but what happens is the people that were looking after her her aunts they've died and now she gets stuck into this kind of mystery there's a lot going on there's a murder in the first book and she's kind of stuck in the middle of it and gets thrust with this person called Stoker who is also a scientist but instead of focusing on butterflies he focuses on more mammals and they get kind of thrust together and it's just a lot of fun like it I love their interactions I love the banter that they have I like the way they solve their mysteries so I'm really looking forward to this second book and just continuing on decided I'm gonna copy Abby's been reading one of the Veronica Speedwell book a month and I think I'm gonna do that because they're just so much fun I really enjoy this series so that's now my new ebook but again I won't be finishing it this week that will go into next week as well so there we are we're up to date with all the reading I've got quite a bit I want to do today but I really 
really want to focus in on finishing the Will of the Many, so hopefully we can get that done. Um, and I'm hoping that the ending for me will really be like, yes, this is perfect and I really want to continue on. Otherwise, this is not going to be a priority series for me to continue on because I've got so many that I love that I want to focus on. Anyway, I'm gonna stop repeating myself. I'm gonna get on with my day. I'll catch up with you shortly. Um, but yeah, right, let's, let's go out and enjoy this day off. I am feeling so good and so happy today. I've got loads of video plans. I wanna do a lot of filming today. So fingers crossed we can get that all done. But for now, it's time to wrap up the vlog. As you can see, we've had some decor additions because I've started my reset video for April and I like how it's turning out. It's so cute and spring and I'm just, I'm just happy. It's a really good time. Let's get to the books. So quickly recap some of the ones that I've been reading this week. We have Poison by Ben Hubbard. I read a little bit yesterday, so I'm now up to Hitler's Cyanide Command because obviously we're looking at different poisonings. The atrocities that happened during Hitler's reign is a big part of that uh, because of the different poisons that they would use. So this is a bit more of like a tougher read because, you know, of what's happened and the fact that it was on such a massive scale. But it's still interesting to learn about cyanide and how it all worked and stuff in a very morbid way. But yeah, so that's where I've got up to on that, which is page 139. So I'm almost done with this. I've got like 60 pages left to go. Yeah, it's good. So I'm definitely gonna be finishing this next week, hopefully. Moving into next week is also the ebook, which is Perilous Undertaking the second Veronica Speedwell book. Didn't read any of that yesterday and I probably won't pick it back up again until the middle of next week when I'm back at work and that'll be my lunchtime book read. I mean, I'm enjoying the start of it, really happy with it, but that's gonna be again in next week's vlog. The ebook that I did finish for this week is Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone and this was so much fun. It was a great cozy murder mystery and I really think the ending is what catapults it into such a good, book because it was so well done like I loved it I loved how it took kind of not classic mystery tropes but the golden era mystery tropes Agatha Christie things like that it was really really fun really good and he mentioned a few different cozy well I don't know if they're cozy mystery authors or just mystery authors that I'm interested in trying some of their work from so that was really good and I just loved how interactive and entertaining this book was so that was a hit I loved that book it was really really good would highly recommend and then of course we have the physical book that I've been making my way through, or at least the main book, which is The Will of the Many, and I did finish this yesterday. I was expecting a bit more from the ending, I'm not gonna lie, because of the way it's been so hyped up, the ending of this book, like, it was interesting, and I'm not gonna go into spoilers, and it'll be intriguing to see how it's done in the second book, but I feel like this book almost felt like a prequel in a way. It was good, but it really wasn't a new favourite of mine and obviously I've mentioned my pros and cons of this book and none of that really changed. Again it's not a bad book but I do think I was hoping for more from this book and it just didn't quite deliver. I would be interested in picking up the second book because I want to see if that delivers a bit more of what I'm looking for. I just think it definitely got a bit repetitive in terms of the academy and the things that were going on. I did like the lead up to the ending that was quite like high stakes in a way like there was a, there was tension there were, it was high pay like there was a lot of pacing there was let me restart build up to the actual ending of the book was good there was kind of like sad moments in there that felt like oh okay we're getting some stakes however I can't go into spoilers and I refuse I won't go into spoilers so it makes kind of some of the things that I'm a bit like why did it have to happen like that it's hard to talk about because I can't go into spoilers but there's certain things that are happening that I'm just like but if you just had better communication that wouldn't have happened and did we need that situation to happen the way it did like I just beside the point it was good I liked it there was definitely more stakes towards the end which makes me think the second book might have more of what I'm looking for if I'm being brutally honest this book could have done with being chopped by about 150 pages and I would have been so much more connected to the book. It's one of those things where I feel like this is disappointing. It's not bad, 
but I'm disappointed because I was hoping for more. So it's still a good book, but I don't think I would be like really like, oh my god, I need the second book right now because I was just like, well, it was okay. It was a decent book. I like what he's doing with it. The ending was interesting. I would continue to see how it went, but I'm not like, oh wow, this is a new favourite. Oh my god, that was amazing. But I can see why so many people are. Because I'm disappointed, because I was expecting this to be such a fantastic new favourite, all the stars, etc. And it wasn't. I know that my, when I've been talking about this book, it's been coming across like I haven't enjoyed it, and I have, it's just, I had such high expectations for this book and it hasn't hit them, which is my fault, not the book's fault. So just take what I've said with a pinch of salt and with the reality that my expectations were too high for this book. But yeah, okay, right, we're gonna stop talking about it because I feel like I just constantly go around in circles. But yes, there we go. That is all the reading for this week. I had a good time. Honestly, it has been a good time. The week in general, you know what? It's been mainly work, been tired, but we're at the start of my five days off. Well, we're on the second day of my five days off and I'm very excited. Actually, no, I'm on the third day of my five days off. Ugh, the days off go so quick. Anyway, moving on. It's been a good week. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you've been up to, what you've been reading, if you've read any of these books, if you want to read any of them. Let me know all the things below. I think if you've made it this far, then we have to put a knife emoji for everyone in my family has killed someone because that was my favourite read of this week. So definitely put that in the comments below if you've made it this far or you just don't know what you want to comment and thank you so much for taking the time to watch these videos i i say it in every video because it's true like i appreciate each and every single one of you that takes the time to watch these videos even if you're just a silent watcher and you don't want to comment anything like i still truly appreciate all of it like it's amazing support and i just feel so lucky all right anyway if you have enjoyed this video please do consider giving it that thumbs up subscribing and commenting those three things really help this channel out so thank you so much my social media links and anyone i've mentioned will always be linked below for you and i will of course catch you in the very next video